Hello, my name is DB, and I'm in DB Studios. And welcome to all things brass and technology. What I want to talk to you about today is when I'm tracking trumpet in DB Studios, where is my microphone placement in regards to the trumpet? Yes. So today, this episode, we're talking about studio stuff, production. All right, so let's get it. All right, let's get to it. Now, in regards to working in the studio, tracking, producing, all that kind of stuff, just studio life, I learned all of this stuff in the street. You know, I'm the youngest of five, and my three older brothers are musicians, so I learned a lot from them and watching them, you know, do tracks and all that kind of stuff and working with electronics, you know. So some of the greatest things is just to be in an environment and watch and learn right and then as I got better on trumpet and my instrument I learned more about music and then became a professional musician and started doing sessions you know you learn a lot of stuff in the field and that's just being in the environment right so pretty much you know that's my background just learning things in real time in the field now, there was a few semesters that I did take some classes at Berklee College of Music, just in regards to mixing and stuff, which was very helpful, right? But pretty much all this stuff that, you know, I do at DB Studios, which is, you know, a really wonderful, blessed environment, um, I learned in the street. And a lot of things that I learn now is from YouTube. You know, I just ask you know i'm uh yes i'm an android person i have an android phone and uh yes just android is for me suited better you know right? so i asked google you know hey google blah blah how do i blah, blah, and blah, 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 thousand videos come up so youtube is a great source uh to learn a lot of things right so mike placement my mic placement now I'll say this there are some basic rules and regulations to recording the most important is we want to capture or you know we're trying to capture audio that's clean and without distortion because once you get once the sound is distorted, I mean, you can't really fix it. So you want to make sure that you capture a nice, clean audio. That's nice and clean, no distortion, the low noise threshold, just a nice, clean audio. And then, you know, you could work with that. Now, once we got that, it's really just the ability of the musician their sound conception and the, their, the way they emote music, right? But from an engi engineering standpoint, we just want to capture, you know, a nice, clean tone without distortion. Yeah. Okay, so let me talk about compression and EQ going in, so when, when I'm tracking. Now, what's imperative is concept of sound sound is the mirror of the mind to achieve a great sound you have to know what a great sound sounds like and so you know we work on our tone regardless of instrument right because that's the first thing people hear is the sound how does it sound like right so i know my sound and i know how i like to sound i like a dark sound with some top end but just full and with core right so my concept is I'm trying to get a sound in the track where it sounds as natural as possible. 
it sounds like when you hear it, I'm in the room with you playing, you know. So I go in with no compression, no compression on the trumpet. I don't want to be squashed or anything, you know, and I'll play on the mic where nothing's overloading and of course we'll do all the levels and everything, right? So I go in with no compression. Now with EQ, I definitely EQ the microphone. Now all these different mics, ribbon, condenser, they all have different sounds. Like if you go from an RCA 44, if you go to a Coles 4038, or if you go to AKG 414, whatever mic that you use, they all sound different. And you have to experiment with different mics until you find the mic that really captures your sound and your vibe, you dig? So for years, I've always used ribbon mics, which I'm gonna do a video on different microphones that I've used. But now I'm kind of going more to condenser. And again, that's another video, right? But with EQ, I definitely EQ the microphones. And all I'm doing with EQ is to try to get my sound the way I like to sound in a track, right? So, and it's usually like this. I'm trying to find the best way to explain this without getting too techy. But um, especially with condenser mics, you know, I sound a lot brighter. And that's, you know, the condenser mics are what I'm starting to use. So I'm finding myself backing off of the high end. So I'll back off of the high end till it feels right to me. The mid range, I usually just leave straight up neutral. The low end, I will boost until it feels nice and warm and round. And I think that's the easiest and most simple way for me to explain it. And all this, I'm using my ears to capture, you know, my sound. And, you know, things may change from mic to mic, of course, and from room to room, because the room definitely is a big factor to the sound, right? But that's usually my process yeah next up is mic placement where is my horn in relationship to the microphone now this mic is a rca 44. hey man this sucker is heavy got some weight to it man i can do curls with this this is a great microphone yes this is industry standard for recording and brass players. Oh yeah, I'm blessed to have one, yes. And I love it and I've recorded so many records with this, even though I don't really use it too much anymore because it's too dark. We'll be mixing and I'm like, the trumpet is too dark, brighten it up. Okay, man, it's still too dark, brighten it up. I say, you know what, RCA 44, I love you, but you're done, I gotta move on, it's just, man. You know, but I use it for other things now. I use it, you know, sometimes for saxophone. You know, I'll do a ribbon condenser uh, combination on a saxophone, like maybe uh, the RCA 44 and a U87, or, you know, RCA 44 and the AKG 414. And uh, it sounds great, you know. I will use the RCA 44 to show you where. I place the bell of the horn to the mic. Let's get it. Here's my horn. And it happens to be a Shelky Handcraft, an HC2. Yes, copper bell. Monet mouthpiece on it. Yes, Shelky is the mark of excellence. You better know. Okay, so this is the moment where I show you where I place the mic. But wait a second, this is the moment. Wait a second. Hey man, you Kenny Dorham lovers. Come on man, trumpet people. KD, remember that record that he had singing? I thought, it, I, I remember it to be KD sings, but I think the record was called This Is The Moment. I'm trying to, I'm going back to my college days. 
uh, this is the moment. I think it was uh, late 50s, man. It had to be like 58, 59. I think it was on Orrin Keep News' uh, label, Riverside. But Kenny Dorham was singing, man. It sound killing, too. I didn't know the cat. Yeah, I didn't know he was able to sing until I heard that record, man. It was deep. This is the moment. Kill it. I, I don't, I don't, I can't remember the song. I know the, I remember the melody, but I don't, I can't remember the words, man. This is the moment. Show up, Kenny was singing, man. I was like, what? I didn't know Kenny Dorham sings. Wow, sounds killing. And let me tell you something. Cat sleep on KD. Stop sleeping. I know I'm getting off track, but this is important, man. And just listen to what Jimmy Heath told me. Jimmy, he said, KD was the slickest trumpet player. He said, man, that man played chord changes and was like a fox. Slick. You know, hey man, Jimmy Heath played with all the trumpet players, man. He shoot, he listen to him with Clifford Brown. He played with everybody, man. He loved KD. He said he loved the way Kenny Dorham played on, uh, you know, played chord changes. Listen to KD, uh, uh, KD and Jimmy on Showboat. Hey man, but that record, go check that out. This is the moment, man. Kenny, Kenny Dorham singing, boy, and he sings, um, he sings "I Remember Clifford." Oh man, when I heard, I was like. What? Yeah, man, the introduction. I know he'll never be forgotten. He was the king on crown. Changes. I know I'll always remember. I'm trying to remember. The warmth. Of his sound. Yeah, dude, come on, man. I'm getting excited just re revisiting the record, you know, off the top of my head, man. Because I listened to that record a lot, man. Because I was just so intrigued to hear Kenny Dorham sing. Don't sleep on my man. Go check him out. I got to get back on track. All right? Let me... <laughs> hey, KD, man. Let me show you the mic and the bell. Let's do it. Okay, here it is. I get as close as I can on the microphone without touching it. That close mic, you know, setup. And that's it. You know, if I could fit the whole bell in the mic, I would, <laughs> you know, but I get as close as I can without touching it. And that's, that's the way I track, you know. I just feel that that sound for me captures, I mean, you can hear me breathing, all the heart, soul, everything, the purities, the impurities, the humanity in the sound. Because I'm not perfect. Nobody is. And life is not perfect. And things shouldn't always sound perfect. Because we're not machines, we're human, you dig? So we gotta get to the heart and soul of things, you dig? So I just feel that when I have that, the horn right up to the mic and I find this sweet spot in the mic and I can really capture, you know? And this is the same technique for everything. You know, if I'm playing horn section, everything, I'm on the mic, and that's pretty much it. That's the way I track. And you know, I'm very, very happy the way everything comes out, you know? So that's pretty much it. It took a long time to get to this, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, dude, come on, man, that's what's up. All right, let me play a little bit for you with the, the way I like to um, track. Boom, let's go. In a sentimental mood, B section, let's get it.
I'm having fun. Yes, whatever you're trying to do out here, make it happen. Don't wait for nobody. Do it. Let's get it. I'm out. Please subscribe to All Things Brass Technology. Till next time.